Hey, this is Brian Hegney, instructor of game and interactive media design, and I want to do a very quick video right now showing how to make whoops, a book, let's say. And I'm not going to worry about um, units right now. I'm just going to make a book. Um, this is the basic book, right? It's fairly big. Um, yeah, let's go ahead, and it's just a box. I think it's a one by one by one box. Yeah, one length segment, one width segment, one height segment. Uh, I know, oh, so I don't have any units. That's okay. I'm just gonna eyeball it. I'm gonna go ahead and whoop, in the modify tab, I'm gonna start setting up my length segments and my width segments and height segments. Um, I'll go ahead and give two there. I'll give two there. I want to give three here. Let's say, let's do that. And anything else I'll kind of play around with in an edit poly. And in the edit poly, I'm just going to go ahead and kind of using just my move tools, kind of create some the overall understanding of how the cover is going to work with my pages. Covers really aren't that big, right? So I'm going to kind of make this make sure the cover is like that. I'm gonna play around with my spine here and I'm gonna look at a book. Oh, I'm gonna look at a book right now with like a thick cover. Uh, you can't see that. Okay, I got a thick book here. Okay. Okay, I can see that. So this is gonna have something like that. It's gonna be fairly uniform, the same height here, the same width for the entire cover. Now it's going to have a couple other things going for it. So I am going to, now that I've done this, I really don't need this one. I'm going to go ahead and add another edit poly because that's what I do. You don't have to be as insane as I am with your edit polys. I'm going to control backspace to get rid of the that line because I don't want it. I'm going to add another swift loop here. You'll see why. One there, one here, and I think one in the middle. Yeah. And the point for doing that, I'm going to go into my left viewport, ZZ. I'm going to go into vertex mode and kind of move these move that I should have moved these at the same time so I'm going to hit command Z 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 there I'm going to select this I'm going to control select this so that I move both of these at the same time now I'm going to move, select all of these and kind of move them at the same time and select these two middle ones and move them at the same time as well. All right, let's see what I did there. Okay, I just made a slightly better curve kind of thing here. All right, the next thing I'm going to do is I want to make the bend in the in the spine here to make this really look like a spine. So I'm going to use Swift Loop. I'll put it about this close. And I think I'm going to need another Swift Loop up similarly close. I can always change that a little later. I'm going to go into front view, ZZZ. Mm, nope, I'm going to go into left view, ZZZ. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and select this entire loop. I'm going to use tap um, R for scale. And I'm only going to scale in the up-down direction, which in this case is Y, because that's the view. I'm going to go to world, so that's actually Z. There we go. World coordinates. I'm going to stretch this down. Is that what I want? Yeah. Nope, that's not what I want. I'm going to move this first to like there. I'm going to stretch this one down. Move it. I like to move it, move it. There we go. Something like that. I'm going to go ahead and move this a little bit closer. Add another swift loop here. 
and kind of just add more geometry there. Okay, now that I've done that, okay, we can see that there's a little bit of stuff going on there. Let's see. It's okay. It's not perfect. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is, well, let's just go ahead and maybe add a turbo smooth. Yeah, obviously don't look at this side. What I'm really concerned about is, do I have a spine going on here? Mm, don't really love it, so I'm going to get rid of that turbo smooth. Oh, right, this needs to come down a little bit. Okay. So go into my left view, zoom, zoom, select all of this. Let's go into my thing here, use my lasso tool. Oops. Make sure I just select windowed mode. Let go. Something like that. Um, the other thing I'm going to do is select both of these, and I'm going to chamfer these. Using the chamfer tool, I'm going to make sure it's not chamfered that much. There we go. Something like that. Okay. Okay. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is going to ins inset my pages. So I'm going to go add another edit poly, and I'm going to use my polygon selection mode, and I'm going to select, whoops, I'm going to make sure I don't scale those or move those, so I'm going to select this version, I'm going to select that. I could have done this a lot easier by going to L view and making sure I have rectangular marquee selection, and I'm going to use crossing mode, and if I just cross everything, bam. I should have selected everything. There we go. Perfect. Oh, in this case, I actually do need... Um, let me go back into left view. I actually want to select all of these. Is that going to get it? Yeah. Yep. Because those are also part of my pages. And I'm going to inset those extrude. I'm going to extrude them in a negative direction though. So if I do that, I just like to see what what type of extrude I'm on and I am on group normals. We should do local normals. There we go. Local normals now it's all going in different directions. Now of course I have to do inset them a little bit. Now that looks like a book. Let's go ahead and accept that. Okay. Ooh, look at that. It's looking a lot more like a book. Let's go ahead and do one more thing, and that's with the edges of this. They need either a chamfer or something like that. Let's go ahead and do chamfer. So I'm going to go to my top view. And I'm going to show my lines here, and I'm going to select windowed mode with mark rectangular marquee selection. I wanted to select all of these lines. Oops, I'm not in edge mode. There we go. So top view. I want to select every single one of my edges, though. So not just this, but I want to select these as well. So I'm going to go top view. I'm going to hold down control to add to my selection. Control add to that selection. And what you'll see is I have all of these selected. <clears throat> oh, and now I'm going to just get rid of these lines here. I don't want to quite do these. I don't think. There, there are a few things I would change in what I'm doing, by the way. But, you know, I haven't modeled the book in a long time. So 
let me set this to wind crossing mode so I can just do this, do that, do that, do that. Okay, now let me make sure I have all of my stuff still. Every edge selected, every edge selected. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, good. Now, here's the fun part. I'm going to choose chamfer. And I'm going to zoom in here pretty. There we go. It's a very small chamfer, and my goal is to make sure I don't screw anything up. So I'm going to check it all out. There we go. Like that. There's good. There's good. There's good. I'm not going to do two or anything. Just do that. Okay. And there we have a book that's pretty nice. Um, the last thing I'm going to do is add another edit poly and select every single polygon face, put it on smoothing group one. So I'm going to say clear all, put it all on smoothing group one. Now that doesn't make sense to have the pages on smoothing group one. So then the other thing I'm going to do, go back into front mode, go back into look at my um, whoops, left mode to see my books or my pages here. Select crossing mode, drag out to select every single one of these pages. There we go. That's going to be on smoothing group three. Nope, smoothing group two. Now that they're on different smoothing groups, we can see how that looks like a book with pages. Now this is with a fairly um, complex little spine here. This looks like it could be my, you know, what would happen if I were to turbo smooth this? I don't know. Like what if I want to make a really high, ugh, that looks terrible. Of course I know why that looks terrible. But the spine itself might be look really nice. Um, turbo smooth. If I set to go by smoothing groups, look at that. It's going to keep that nice and straight there. Um, and the reason why this is like that is because of the fact that this was not this is still has this one edge that's not chamfered. Um, so to fix that, to fix that, uh, if I wanted to fix it, I could come here to this whatever. I'd add another edit poly in case I wanted to get rid of that. And I'd select this, 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 and this. And of course, I'd select the corresponding side. Again, this is if you cared about turbo smoothing it to make a really high poly. Um, I would chamfer that as well. There we go. And you see now that makes a lot more sense here. Whoops, that's not what I want to do. Okay. There we go. Now if I accepted that, now when I see Turbo Smooth applied, you can see what that does. Ooh, that's not good. Oh no. Well, I should have done all of those Turbo Smooths at once, so you know, I could... Um... Hey, maybe that means... What's going on there? It could mean... I'm going to pause it. Okay, and here is my final version when I just went in and cleaned up a few things. Um, if I had done all of those chamfers at the same time and included that page edge, it would have been a much cleaner um, thing. But here's like the overall book. Again, these are things you kind of know how to do already, just doing the barrel and the table and then of the extrusion, which I introduced in the prop videos. That's where you would have hopefully have gotten that idea. Um, but here it is, just from a basic box and extruding and being very careful about my edge loops and turbo smooth. Again, this is a high poly. If I wanted to make this a little lower poly, I could have gotten away with it. Um, this is almost too high poly to be a game asset, so I would probably bake those normals down. Okay, bye.